So we've all seen this clip by now because the TNA Twitter has made sure that we've seen the clip. But there was a podcast interview that came out and um, Becky Lynch had mentioned that while living in Orlando, that she was looking at TNA at one point because of how they treated women, taking women's wrestling seriously. We know as TNA fans that uh, the knockout division has been the place to be for women's wrestling for quite some time. So we already know that. Uh, the positive side of this, because you know I'm going to flip it, the positive side is that she name drops TNA, a uh, lot of lot of eyeballs on this clip, and um, it's good brand recognition for them, you know, because it just further, you know, further shows the uh, the wrestling world that the Knockouts Division is is no joke. It is it's no um, that they don't play, you know. When you see uh, Tony Khan, we got the best women's division in wrestling. No, you fucking don't, you know. Um, TNA's always had that lockdown and, and um, there's been good, there's also, there's other good women's divisions out there, you know, but the, the consistent um, quality has been within the, the knockouts division for a long time. So that's, you know, that is the, the positive side of it. Um, the marks though, the, the delusionals that are <laughs> thinking what a missed opportunity we had, um, you know, you got to think Becky Lynch was, had to have been 18 or 19 at this time. And, um, she, I, so I was, okay, I'll put it like, this. I was following her in NXT when she first started out because I watched that show very hardcore at the, at that stage. She was just a girl. She was just a chick with a bad accent, kind of working the Scottish gimmick a little bit. Um, I say bad accent because she speaks a lot more clear now. Like you can understand what the hell she's saying. You know, but at the time she was very, very unpolished, and uh, as I said, brown hair just just looked like a chick. And when with the whole four horse women deal, she was number four. You know what I mean? Like she never held the NXT Women's Championship. She was she was number four. She rebranded herself. I remember it like yesterday uh, versus Sasha Banks at NXT Takeover. Comes out with the orange hair, uh, new entrance. I mean. <sighs> kind of like what I say what I want with TNA a lot of the time. Like I'm always bringing up Josh Alexander. Like when he came back from injury, dude should have came back a new motherfucker um, instead of doing the same old, same old. But when she rebranded herself and, um, you know, just reimagined what her character should be, I guess you could say more than I say it more than a rebrand. Um, she started taking off. And then she eventually got to the main roster, which I was watching again at that point, very hardcore WWE. And she was teamed up with Paige and Charlotte Flair. But in that group, she was number three. You know, she was the the, the third individual. And yeah, she had her runs and and this and this. And then, you know, I started, I kind of stopped watching at this point. But then when the, when she had the broken nose and the whole man thing came about, like that's when she, she kind of catapulted the superstardom. So for anyone to think that, you know, she she came through the TNA pipeline and they could have made her a star and she could have been, you know, like what Gail Kim is now. And, you know, that, that just really wishful thinking because she was very, very raw at the time. You know, she would have been jobbing to the dollhouse, uh, working per appearance and, you know, making a couple hundred bucks for the month. And um, I, I just have a hard time to say that she would have become who she is now is really, really far-fetched because you have to trust uh, many stages of of creative that went on there, many stages of booking and ownership. And, you know, there, there's a lot that would have had to happen right. And, you know, the WWE system, the NXT system, uh, you, they know what they're doing there when they're trying to uh, to build to build the stars of tomorrow. And so, you know, j just to assume that, you know, if TNA got their hands on her at one point, that you know, she would be who she is today is, is, is far fetched. It's pretty ridiculous to think that she was just, you know, raw. And like I said, she was just a chick on TV that could wrestle pretty decently. And, um, she was, she came in at the right time when they were trying to take that WWE women's division to the next level. Like she was in the right place, right time. And that's, that's where it play. That's how it plays out for a lot of wrestling careers, right place, right time. And, it would be cool to go back and say, Hey, she was, she was part of this division, but you know, she likely would have been very, very forgettable. Just like a lot of people who came through the pipeline.
um, who came through TNA in those early years. And of course, the Twitter had to let us know, hey, um, we got name dropped, which I guess is not a big deal. You can retweet whatever you want, but you know, you know my feelings on the TNA Twitter account that it comes off very, very desperate many times. Uh, you know my feeling on that. And I, I promised in 2024 I was going to stop hammering that. Um, and just I unfollowed it. And for the most part, I just tried to ignore it, you know. But, um, of course, they let us know. So I'm sure you guys have seen the clips. And, again, it would be clu- it would be fun to go back and say, man, that's kind of cool she came through. Maybe maybe she would have had a couple of those, those cool matches looking back. But just to assume that the man that she is today uh, would have been who she was for TNA is pretty far-fetched. <laughs> 